Hello everyone, let's discuss some more ECGs in this lecture. You will come across left ventricular hypertrophy very often during your practice, so you should be able to diagnose it. There are many ECG criteria for LVH, however the most common is Skolov-Lyon criteria. Normally in an ECG, the R waves, they increase in length from V1 to V6 and the S wave, they decrease from V1 to V6. This increase in size of R wave is called R wave progression. However, in LVH, this R wave progression is exaggerated or accentuated. Similarly, the S waves are more deep as compared to the normal ECG pattern. So this is what Skolov-Lyon criteria is, that S wave is very deep in V1 and R waves are very tall in V5 and V6. Now this is a normal ECG, so look at the R wave from V1. It's small here, then it keeps increasing in size and V4, V5, V6, it becomes tall. Uh, similarly, look at the S wave, it's tall in V1 and then V2, in V3 it became smaller, V4 more small, V5, V6 it became very small. Now if you compare this ECG of LVH with the previous one, look at the R wave, it's small in V1, then it starts becoming taller and when it comes to V5 and V6 it becomes so tall that it actually somewhat uh, fuses with the S wave of the upper lead. If you look at the S wave, from V1 to V6, they decrease in size, but they are deeper as compared to a normal ECG. In right ventricular hypertrophy, the R wave progression is reversed. That is, the R wave is tall in V1 and V2, and then it starts decreasing in length up till V6. And the S wave is smaller in V1 and V2, and then it starts increasing in length up till V6. If you look in this ECG, the R wave is tall in V1, V2, V3, and then it starts decreasing V4, V5, and see it's very tiny in V6. Similarly, if you look at the S wave, it's very small in V1, but then it keeps on increasing. Look, it's tall in V6 as compared to V1. Next is right bundle branch block. Normally in ECG, after P wave, there is a negative or a downward deflection, which is Q wave. After Q wave, there is a positive or upward deflection, which is R wave, and then a second negative deflection, which is S wave. So in ECG, the terminology is that the upward deflections are called R waves, and negative wave which comes before R wave is Q wave, and the negative wave which comes after R wave is S wave. In right bundle branch block, however, the after P wave, there is no Q wave. Instead, there is a positive deflection. So the positive deflection means R wave. Then after R wave is a negative deflection, which means S wave. And then again, we have a positive deflection that is another R wave. So you see RSR pattern mainly in leads V1, V2, and V3, and they look like the letter M. Also, you will notice that the QRS complexes are broad, that is more than 120 milliseconds or more than three small squares. There will be wide slurred S waves in lateral leads, that is C in lead 1, AVL, V5, and V6. In left bundle branch block, you look at V1 and you see that the S wave is dominant. And you can see two kind of patterns here. Either the RS pattern, as in this ECG, you see there is a positive deflection which is R wave and then a negative deflection which is S wave. So this is RS pattern. Or you can see QS pattern, that is two negative deflection. First is the Q wave and then is the S wave. And this QS pattern looks like a W. So if you see a W in V1, it's a left bundle branch block. And if you see um, the letter M in V1, then it's right bundle branch block. In right bundle branch block, we looked at the S waves in the lateral leads. In left bundle branch block, however, you have to look R waves in the lateral leads. And the R waves could be either M-shaped, like this, monophasic, that is just one R wave with no Q wave or S wave with it. It could be notched, like in this ECG, look at lead 1, 
V5, V6, or it could be an RS complex. This is an ECG of erythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. So the criteria is that we look at leads V1, V2, and V3, and you will see T wave inversions in all three leads. See, it's really evident in this ECG. The second thing is that in 50% of patients, you'll find an epsilon wave. Epsilon wave is a notch at the end of QRS complex. Like if you look at here, see, this is a notch, here's a notch, here's a notch. In all the leads, you will see this notch, right? Here we have a zoomed in picture, QRS, and then a small notch later before the T wave inversion. In Brugada syndrome, you will also find T wave inversion in uh, leads V1, V2, and V3. But you will also find convex ST segment elevation of more than 2 millimeters in more than one of V1 to V3. Like uh, here in this ECG, ST elevation is in V1 and V2, not in V3. Also, you will find partial right bundle branch block Partial right bundle branch block means that there is RSR pattern in V1, V2, and V3, but the QRS is uh, not broad, as in complete right bundle branch block. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is a condition in which there is an extra electrical pathway in the heart. It is of two types, type A and type B. Type A is when the extra pathway is on the left side, and type B is when the extra pathway is on the right side. The ECG criteria is that the rhythm will be sinus and the PR interval will be very short, less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small boxes. Also, the QRS complexes will be broad with a slurred upstroke, which is called the delta wave. In type AWPW, there will be a dominant R wave in V1. Also, there will be right axis deviation in type AWPW as you see, the QRS complex in lead 1 is negative, whereas it is positive in lead 2 and AVF. In type PWPW, the PR interval will be short. You will see the delta wave. But in V1, you will see dominant S wave instead of R wave. Before you interpret the ECG of myocardial infarction, you should know the leads and the area of the heart they represent. That is, 1 AVL, V5, and V6 represent lateral part of the heart. 2, 3 AVF are inferior leads. V1, V2, V3, and V4 are anteroceptal. To diagnose ST elevation MI, you should make sure that the ST elevation is more than one small square in all leads. But if it is in lead V2 and V3, then it should be more than two small squares to be ST elevation MI. Also, the elevation should be in at least two contiguous leads. Con contiguous lead means that two leads that represent the same area of the heart. For example, in this ECG, you see that there is a steel elevation in lead 2, lead 3, and lead AVF. So this is inferior ST elevation MI. In this ECG, the ST elevation is in lead V2, V3, and V4. So this is anteroceptal ST elevation MI. To diagnose ST depression MI, the depression should be more than 0.5 small squares and should be in at least two contiguous leads. For example, in this ECG, the depression is in lead V2, V3, and V4. So this is anteroceptal and STEMI. In pericarditis, you see ST elevation but it is not localized to a certain territory. It is global and wide spread, like in lead 1, lead 2, uh, also V4, V5, V6. And the shape of ST elevation is saddle-shaped uh, or concave-shaped. The other marker is PR depression, which is the most specific marker for pericarditis. And uh, you see in lead 1, the PR uh, interval is depressed. Also in lead 2, um, even in lead V4, V5, and V6. That's it for today. Take care. God bless you all.